I'm Stratis Teloglu, and I'm here today with PissCustomer.com to talk to you about my experience for an investment product I bought through MetLife and my advice regarding uh, the past year uh, dealing with them. I hope that we will find it useful in your uh, uh, trades and uh, maybe if you consider them as a potential uh, insurance broker for your uh, for your needs. Thank you very much. My business with MetLife is I bought from them a savings plan and insurance uh, policy, savings retirement plan through a reseller of theirs, which was Mastered Bank. So Mastered Bank sold me an insurance package of MetLife. The savings plan was a 10-year savings plan where uh, they invest in a stock market and slowly, gradually, they accumulate some capital uh, that you get it upon retirement. So when they sold a, a package, they marketed, the bank did that, they marketed the policy um, I said, I don't know anything about the local markets. I don't know anything about the areas that you operate. And they marketed as if they would provide advice. So actually, they said in writing that we will choose the funds for you because we know. What happened is after I signed for the um, insurance policy, and uh, the uh, guarantee, the, the guarantee period passed, they disappeared. So, and then when I started writing to them uh, in the bank, uh, what is going on with the insurance policy? They said, ah, uh, we do not know anything. So I wrote to MetLife, I called MetLife, and I sent, I shared with MetLife the written communication that I had with the bank because the uh, telephone calls, I, I could not have a record, but I had a, rec uh, a written communication. MetLife orally gave me, uh, agreed that it wasn't what they were supposed to be selling, but they said they cannot do anything. So when I asked, okay, what can we do now? Then they said, now you can end your insurance policy, but we're going to keep all our commissions, which is about 30%, and the surrender value will be 70% of your contribution so far. In my question, you agreed that um, here you, uh, the, the bank did not um, uh, go according to the governance and compliance rules, uh, and they mislead the client. They said, if you have any issues, you can go to the court. So I found this unethical. I found this um, unfair, at least. And I found this um, definitely not an approach and a behavior to the, to the customers, especially when it comes from the biggest insurance company in the world and when it comes from a reliable bank. They only wanted to... Uh, secure their commissions and nothing else and their policy was rip off the clients as much as we can to, to secure the commissions. So so I haven't decided what I'm going to do next but I have very little power because uh, the lawyer, the legal system is very expensive so basically if I go to the lawyers, all the money that is uh, uh, being kept now from commissions will be spent on lawyers. So at the end of the day, again, I will be penalized. So my question is, why a client should be penalized, victimized for mistakes that the bank and the low quality assurance of the insurance um, um, actually triggered? Because all I wanted was a savings plan that I will put my money every month and then I would have some security when I finish up. I never, the, the plan was not to make the insurance 
company richer and the bank richer, the plan was to make sure that I get something when I retire. Thank you very much for your story. And it certainly does sound pretty surprising in a bad way that such a financial giant as MetLife would treat their customer like that because they are indeed one of the biggest insurance companies in the world. Now, let me ask you this, please. What was the reason you chose MetLife to buy this policy? And did you consider anybody else like let's say their competition maybe when you were choosing them the reason for me choosing MetLife is because it's a world known institution it was based in united states i thought that they would have some quality on the jurisdiction and basically they will have some monitoring on the governance and compliance. Because if you go to smaller companies, uh, usually uh, they have loose rules on how their subsidiaries work and all, they care about the numbers and nothing else. So uh, I was sort of convinced the customer is in the center and therefore I'm not going there to gamble. I'm not going there to do something illegal. I'm only going there for me to secure my future, for them to get their normal and nominal uh, commissions. But I never thought that they would promote products telling lies into my face. Up until the moment I signed the contract and the guarantee period and the, the uh, period that I could back off fast, and then they disappear. Uh, apparently, well, apparently, this is a known, this is a, probably a communication uh, line that they follow with many customers. Stratus, when you were talking to the representatives or a representative, however many of them were there, how was the communication going? Did you call them over the phone? Did you email them? Did they email or call you? How did they behave? How would you characterize the communication? Okay. okay. I tried every possible communication, emails, certified letters, registered post, courier, and telephones. The truth is that it, first I tried emails and the response from both the bank and, the, uh, and MetLife, so both from Maastricht and MetLife was very, very slow. Two weeks, three weeks, one month to reply to email. So at a certain moment, I thought that they ceased operations because no one in the world takes four weeks to reply an email. This proves that the quality and how much they care about the customer. So this was my first indication. Then I did try uh, phone numbers. And every time I was, I was um, going through a different person that had no clue, and it took me another two months to reach the heads of the units. In the meantime, I did send registered posts with courier and certified post to all the executives of both the bank and insurance company that never got a reply. It just my email was ignored. Finally, I did try the governing institutions, which is the, the central banks in those countries, and again, the response I had was that they are very loose and reluctant on the uh, illegal uh, behaviors that these institutions have. So, so my experience for MetLife is do not put a cent in any insurance policy of the uh, um, company without making sure that you have a proper customer service and this is written in the contract. Do not put one cent in the company. Avoid it because you will be victimized. If, let's imagine the situation in a perfect world that MetLife decides to come back to you, acknowledge the fact that they did wrong by you, and they want to offer I don't know, some kind of a consolation thing to you. 
What could they do right now to make you feel better about the whole situation? Uh, they could do two things. Either to let me exit the policy without being penalized or to transfer the policy to an institution that can provide advice exactly as they market the product to me. Because they market the product to me as if the, uh, they will provide advice, the bank will provide advice to me. The bank lied just to get their commissions. MetLife saw their written communication and understood that they didn't have any checks on their reseller. So said, if your reseller lied, and you don't want, for whatever reasons, to penalize him. Don't penalize me. Find another reseller that they can that it can provide the service that it was promised in written, in official communication, and transfer my policy there. In this case, I will continue until the end. You will get the commissions, and and we will just leave a bad reseller aside. They said, I'm sorry, we cannot do that. Or we cannot find a reseller. Uh, but that's what happened. So I gave him two very clear options. Um, in real world, they should have they should come back to me even with a compensation. Because we are talking one year exactly since last February. Emails, calls, certified letters, couriers, I mean a ton of hours and expenses and psychological damage to find out what is happening. Because you understand when you write an email and it takes a month to be replied, you don't know and you are in, you don't know what's going on. So that's what I asked um, MetLife. And I even said, I would even, uh, you know, help you to, and I will provide you all the facts and figures to find out what's going on. They acknowledge it on the phone. They acknowledge it that, the, the, the loop was not uh, correct. Their reseller was not acting correct, and they didn't. And actually, they stopped the relation with the bank. Now they stop, but this does not help me at all. I mean, to, they acknowledge that the uh, that the bank was uh, is a fraud operation. It, 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 I mean, they they, they are uh, um, doing illegal activities and and, and non. They are not compliant. But this, how does it help the client? Doesn't. Stratus, what if you had an opportunity to send a message to those people who will be listening to you on YouTube? And they will be listening, as a matter of fact, to your interview, and hopefully they will hear this message. What would you tell the folks around the world about your experience with MetLife? Before depositing one cent in the company before buying any insurance product. Make sure that all your promises, all your marketing promises, all your written marketing promises and oral ones that you have are um, um, represented, are, are described in the contract. And there is a penalty, if any, for the MetLife in case this is breached by them or their resellers. Otherwise, do not even come close to MetLife. You will, at the end, you will lose money. You would be much better off uh, doing the strategy on your own. If all your worries, everything that the uh, salesman promised to you is written on the contract, very clearly, without these Mickey Mouse words that nobody understands, then you can go ahead. But if not, do not believe, because unfortunately, central institutions, governing institutions like central banks, have a very loose uh, control over them, and they will not, let's say, take time aside to, to, to deal with a an individual client. Maybe a mass fraud, maybe they will take time. But any individual client is powerless.